Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello, nerds. You're listening to an episode on the Nerdcore podcast feed. If you're feeling generous, please consider pledging to a tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nerdcore. We have tiers as low as $1 per month. Thanks so much, and enjoy the episode. Hello, nerds. You're listening to an episode on the Nerdcore podcast feed. If you're feeling generous, please consider pledging to a tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nerdcore. We have tiers as low as $1 per month. Thanks so much, and enjoy the episode. Hey, everyone. Before we can get into today's episode, I need to talk to you all about Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast and is the platform I've been using for over two years. Anchor is easy because it's free, includes creation tools on your tablet or phone from the get-go, rewards creators with sponsorships with no minimum listenership, and best of all, they distribute your podcast to places like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. So if you want to make a podcast, you should download the Anchor app or visit anchor.fm. Now let's get into today's episode. Welcome back. You're listening to the Nerdcore Podcast, episode 288. And it is the last review for horror theme month here at the Nerdcore. As always, it is the Nerdy Chicano here with Dixie in the back, of course. Uh, it's me. I'm here. To... She, is, she is far more excited for this film review than I am. Well, you know, we got, we'll got. we do the film review after we do another thing, but let's go ahead and introduce the guests. As always, it's Brad, you know, just doing the... The, what's it called? Uh, the the co-hosting, as always. Steve. Yep. Uh, we've got Leia and Aiden back again. Hello. 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 Lovely. Hello. Yeah. Uh, how's everybody doing today? I mean, I just had to watch this, so <laughs> not particularly great. <laughs> uh, I'm well. doing fantastic. I have been playing Animal Crossing New Leaf. Oh. And I found Gulliver, so yeah. that's cool. I am doing great. I got to rewatch one of my favorite movies of 2018. I mm-hmm. just watched the Star Wars trailer like three times, and uh, uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to do today. I'm, I'm today's a really good day, man. I love today. Mm-hmm. So, uh, first of all, before we ever get into the review today, we were graced by the wonderful presence of the news, the last, the final trailer for Rise of Skywalker. And of course, we have to talk about it, right, Brad? Uh, no, sure. I haven't. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> well, that's, that's d- your just problem. Just to let you know, it looks like Star Wars. Looks like Star Wars. Well, that's what I was expecting. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, uh, because we did a whole episode on the Last Jedi trailer when that dropped. Uh, what's it called? Almost like fucking years ago. And what's it called? Uh, we're gonna do it for here for today, Brad. Uh, we're not gonna actually spoil the fu- the fucking trailer. We're just gonna. You know, How talk you about it. Trailer? What? How do you spoil a trailer? Like well, true. True. Then I'm sorry, Leah. <laughs> the point of a trailer. <laughs> it rhymes with a- Apple Team. Apple Team. And Brad, this trailer is fucking awesome. I, I mean, mean it, lo- it looks like a fucking Star Wars trailer. So I mean, yeah. it's looked like every Star Wars trailer. But it's a really it good like final trailer, too. dude. Especially. I mean, it's- Especially that. It's, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm not gonna blow his dick or anything. That's for sure. But it, well, it's good. You, sure. You're missing out. Missing I mean, out, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're missing out, bro. <laughs> I like the whole three PO saying, "Like I'm getting the last look at my friends," and that that warmed my heart. I was like, "Oh which, man," which, which makes you question, what the fuck are they doing with three PO? They finally just like shipping him out of the. They don't want to make fun of him Falcon, anymore. Just throwing him out the Falcon, being like, "Bye, bitch." Yeah, yeah. What's it called? It makes you think like, oh, now we're going to start being nice to 3PO. It's just the last movie, right? <laughs> nah, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. It looks great, man. That The whole, like, uh, what's it called? That ice planet that they're going, that's a shit ton of TIE fighters, man. Well, you you know, we visited an ice planet before. It was called yeah. Hoth. Yeah, but this one looks like it's a glacier in a big fucking ocean. I don't know what the fuck we're at there. Probably Hoth. Hoth. Climate change finally hit Hoth. Glo- global, global warming. <laughs> Global warming hit Hoth, and now this place is basically an ocean. Yes. Take yes, care of our o- take care of our planet, man, because Hoth obviously is not the next destination. 
No. Uh, but look, man, the trailer looks great. What's it called? Uh, I, I'm, I love that shot of Kylo in the rain with the with the with the saber, and then he just come. We can go to that next one. And he's just drenched in rain, and I love that shot, dude. That was fucking awesome. Brad. Uh, yeah, I mean, sure. look, Brad has <laughs> sure. been a little bitch today because usually when we talk about these trailers, he's really in there talking about it. Today, I don't know what's going on. He's just being a little bitch. I mean, you're just, I'm i am not as excited as you, apparently. Shut that's, up, Brad. That's just how it's going. No, no, it's no. Going. I am not as amped for this trailer. This trailer looks like every other fucking So Star you're Wars saying you, pref- you, prefer, you prefer the Darth Ray one that we got before? Yeah, I preferred that. I preferred something different. This looks like every other fucking trailer we've gone before. Well, whatever, Brad. Uh, you heard a, the, the Emperor's voice in there. We still, ha- we still don't see him in the flesh, but... He's in well, there. You kinda, he's kind of like on his his hover chair coming down again. Yeah. yeah. So he's like on his hover chair going down. Wait, is, you know that dude can't walk? Is that who was in there? I couldn't see that. At yeah, all. at the end. At the end, he's on his little hover chair. That's what Shit. I'm guessing. Oh, oh well, yeah. Well, uh, rise. Yes. All right, yeah. man. Well, you know the trailer was fucking awesome. You guys should go and get your tickets if you can, Brad. Uh, what's it called? Got my tickets for the lighthouse. You should go and get yours. Check yours now, Brad, because it's starting to expand. The movie's gonna start expanding on Friday. So you should... starting to expand. Hey. Well, shut up, Brad. So go Damn. check if your uh, if your theater's gonna be playing the lighthouse, Brad. But uh, for those of you guys who already got your Rise of Skywalker tickets, awesome. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and uh move on now. We're gonna talk about the uh movie we're gonna talk today about. Leia, are you still here? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I'm also playing Animal Crossing because I found a perfect apple, and so I had to plant this tree. <laughs> All right. As always, if you hear the... <laughs> that means that the uh, spoiler is... Hold on. Sorry, that wasn't too loud, guys, was what it? What is happening? If you hear the... <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That means that's the spoiler one is in effect. So for those of you who have not watched Hereditary, you guys should go and uh, click off. Because our spoiler warning is in effect in a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> All right. This is the most horrifying thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Just... Pretty much. Pretty much. It's up there. My, my laugh is horrifying. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> right. What is just played by itself, kind of, yeah, without any yeah. like like intention. No context, yeah. 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 Well, as always, we're going to go get and read from the best source in the world wikipedia we <laughs> Her- yeah. the most reliable source uh, hereditary yeah. is a t- 2018 american supernatural psychological horror drama film written and directed by ari aster in his feature directorial debut it stars tony colette alex wolf millie shapiro and gabriel burn oh wow is that the burns burn burn yeah. as a family oh, haunted oh, what I was just like, one of us. One of us. Google Google Google. As a uh, as a family haunted by a demon after the death of the secretive uh, grandmother, Hereditary premiered on January twenty first, twenty eighteen, in the midnight section at the twenty eighteen Sundance Film Festival, and was theatrically released in the United States on June eighth, twenty eighteen. It was acclaimed by critics, with Colette's performance receiving particular praise, and it was a commercial. Ex- Express commercial success, making over 79 million on a 10 million budget to become A24's highest grossing film worldwide. Oh shit! Um, as always, what's it called? Um, shot by the amazing Pavel Podgorsky. Is that the uh, Pavel Podgorsky? Uh, That's like Pavel. If it's two W, it's a W in Polish. Oh really? Yeah. How about you say it? Uh, Pavel Podgorzilski. Okay. I, I don't know the last name, but it's about Okay. It's Sorry, I'm not white, Aiden. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's live... what? Maybe you should live in a Polish neighborhood. And you can... <laughs> yeah. some Polish. You want me? You want me to get? You want me to? You want me to move to a white neighborhood? Is that what you want yeah. me to do? That'll work well for you. Oh yeah, that will really well for me. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what's it called? They might just call INS on me just for shits and giggles. <laughs> All right. I mean, <laughs> All right, you know, and uh, what's it called? Shot by uh by what's it called? The Pavel for good little and yeah. uh and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever he said. <laughs> whatever he said. I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> I I really don't mean any disrespect. Uh, I do. <laughs> I do. 
he also shot Mit- <coughs> Mitzomar, so you know there's that too. Uh, I believe he's just the one who works there uh, with Aster. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, what's it called? Spin the wheel here. Uh, I'll give my thoughts at the end. I'll go and let the other ones go first. Uh, let's go, Leia, Aiden, Brad, me. So Leia, go first. Uh, no, let's let them talk shit first, and then I okay. can prove why they're wrong. A- a- no, 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 no. Okay, hold on, hold on. No, Shut no, up, no, guys. Right up no, because then we gotta listen to y'all. Just you know. Gangbang this fucking movie. Well, okay. Oh, yeah, I thought yeah. you were gonna say gangbang. Let's do one so I was like, bad, what? one good, one bad, one good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Out. That's what okay. we want. Oh, okay. Leia, that. Aiden. Leia, yeah, Aiden. Leia, Aiden, Aiden. Me, bread. I don't want to go first terms. again. Make Aiden. Okay, go. Aiden, Leia, bread, me. <laughs> okay, I'm good. I'm down with that. There we okay. go. Okay, Aiden. Except these terms. Uh, this was painful to watch again. <laughs> first off. Uh, I, before I watched it, I read an, an Amazon review <laughs> that really summed up my experience. Um, Demonic? No, it was just uh, talking about the little girl and her clicking noises. It was. <laughs> it said uh, the clicking noises really foreshadowed what you want to do when you watch this movie is click it off. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. It, it, was, it was great. Uh, but first off, before I tell you what I hated about it, I'm going to tell you like the three pros I wrote down. And then a list of cons. Uh, I thought the wide shot after uh, spoiler after Charlie dies. We are spoilers really in the fact. <laughs> I know, but the wide shot after Charlie dies and like that little like minute or so of just like silence of him like freaking out or whatever and like going into shock. I thought that was well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dinner scene is generally a better scene, I guess. Uh, the like emotional turmoil between the family that's like mm-hmm. brought out by like the silences and shit are fine uh and the wide shot at the end of it uh when they're mm-hmm. just sitting at the table and then like uh i think the mother went back upstairs right oh, mm-hmm. fucking uh that's it as far as good shots oh, um, <laughs> all right the dark scenes are colored well i'll give them that the light scenes however are not especially the interior ones like they just don't look good uh Okay. The black levels of the film are mad inconsistent, especially on the interior, where they kind of raise the shadows and they have this weird, like, yellow red that just invo- invites way too much fucking digital noise into the image. But, you know, it's go- fine, go off. Um, colored by a guy who's not wildly experienced in, like, good films. Like, he's colored Cowboys and Aliens and, like, Avengers <laughs> movies. So, like, what is he uh, <laughs> Damn. Really not. <laughs> Not the greatest choice uh, in terms of the colorist. Uh, and then good old Pavel really hasn't shot anything spectacular either. This or Midsommar are not particularly well shot. But Oh, yeah. God. Okay. <laughs> he nails a wide shot like once a movie. And then the rest of it's just like headroom issues kind of. Especially like the, the dolly and the crane shots. It's just like... The end of it's fine, or the start of it's fine, but in the middle is just this weird fucking thing of like, oh, I'm trying to find a frame, but it'll be there in the end, just wait for it. And it's like, okay, okay, make the thing look good the whole time. Uh, (laughs) The shot of Charlie's, like, casket getting lowered into the ground is, like, a cool concept, but in practice was pulled off kind of terribly. It's just, like, too bright and happy. Like, silk the shit, like, so it's just fucking gloomy or something. Even if it's a bright day, like... Fucking put a flag or it make it feel feels darker. Gloomy in the yeah. sense that, like, she's just fucking burying her only child. But, yeah, she yeah. is, but then the or, color I mean, no, and the cinematography doesn't child. match the fucking mood at what? all. Like, you can okay. have a bright scene that look that feels more gloomy than that, but it was like, oh, it's just a bright fucking day. It's like, okay, that looks like shit. I don't know. Um, I disagree. Yeah, okay. Do you want it to um, look like the funeral in Batman vs. Superman? Uh, I haven't seen it because I watch good movies, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the mom's corpse floating up to the treehouse at the end is like one of the stupidest fucking things. I just hate that shot. It's just like, oh, here we're going up to the fucking tree, and just the ending in general is awful. But that's fine. Cinematically, like looking at it, or like just the, the cheesiness, uh, and yeah, just how the story just in the last, especially the last fifteen minutes, just goes into the dumb satanist bullshit. Like, I get that. They're, like, alluding to that during the film. Like, there's all this, like, little Satanist shit kind of hidden around. Like, the treehouse mm-hmm. has the fucking upside-down cross thing that's, like, fucking... Yeah, dude, I have, like, every single, like, Satan thing written yeah, down. Yeah, it's that's fine. 
but like i don't want to play fucking where's waldo when i'm watching a movie and like for all that shit i, I want to just like experience like i want like that to be a thing when you rewatch it to be like oh cool there's that little thing but it's like <laughs> that shouldn't be the only thing leading up to that it should like there should be other things that allude to this fucking satan plot like there's other parts of it built into it that aren't just like little fucking easter eggs um but I don't know, and, Go and, it, and it shouldn't take them two hours to fucking get to the i point. mean yeah um Mm. After I watched, uh, okay, Brad. what it's Scorsese's new film or whatever, like I listened to him talk afterwards about like some other movies, and he talked about this movie for a little bit, uh, particularly like, that dinner scene I was talking about, and he said it was good, oh, um, and it could also be good without the horror plot, and I think that's kind of where I agree with this is that it's good un- except the horror plot. Like, it could have been a good film, like, add a little bit to, like, the family grieving over the loss of their daughter and all this other dumb shit. Add something else that makes it worth shooting and not have that stupid horror plot that doesn't need to be there. But uh, Also, okay. the, the one uh, thing that the... In the classroom scene at the beginning, like, the girl sitting in front of the, the son, whatever his fucking name is. Peter. Yeah, Peter. Uh, the girl in front of it was, like, saying some pretentious bullshit about, like, the play they were studying, like, he refuses to look at the signs that are being handed him literally the entire play, like, we get it, Ariaster, you're trying to ha- hide shit, and then you're also telling us about it, like, go fuck yourself. I mean, it's not also, like, it's not really directed at the audience for that, yeah. either, it's more directed yeah. at the family, I feel, because, like, they ignored all the signs I mean, that were there, but, like, her like, whole life. It's unbelievably pretentious to be like, oh, I'm hiding shit and I'm going to tell you about it. Like, go fuck yourself. But you know how many movies Even have done that before this? You know, like, oh, a lot of them do yeah. it, but it's annoying when they do. Even all the fucking classics that we love in, in, in cinema, you know, they've done that before. You know? They're not like jerking themselves off about how well they can they hide are. things. They are. They definitely are. I mean, a lot yes. of them are, but like, you can do it in a way that's not just like wildly in poor taste, but you know. Jesus Christ, the fucking superhero movies hide that shit everywhere. You're like, oh man, did you see this Easter egg? Oh man, did you see yeah, this? Yeah, and no one's really calling them good either. But those don't really, oh, those don't really like, have any, like, I don't know, semblance on the plot, though, I yeah. feel. All right, let's I go. I, th- I think superhero yeah. movies are dumb, but. <laughs> let's, let's go to uh, Miss Leia next. Okay. Yeah. Jeez, I don't even know <laughs> where to start. <laughs> um, well, you got to get going. Okay, well, this is the fifth time I've watched this movie, and every time I watch it, I still find, like, new things that I really like, Mm -hmm. and I completely disagree with Aiden where he says that he doesn't feel like he wants to play Where's Waldo with the movie, because that's, like, my favorite fucking thing to do. I love watching movies over and over again and just taking apart every single thing that I can, and so... I really love just all, like, the small attention to detail that's, like, hidden throughout the movie. Um, God, I don't even know where to start. Let's see. I have, I posted my, like, deranged notes up on uh, Twitter. So you can see my drawings. Um, (laughs) I have, like, 11 pages of all this, like, just crazy-ass notes because of this movie. Because, like, when I first saw it, I was just kind of blown away at the end. Like, I was just like, oh shit, like, how much did Charlie know what was going to happen throughout this movie? Like, that's something that just, like, popped into my brain the moment it was over. And so I started researching, like, King Payman and all this other stuff and, like, taking apart all the tiny details. And so, like... I learned that King Payman, he has all these powers, right? And one of them is knowledge of past and future, ah, past and future events. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that like lends something more to the movie too. Cause you're like, okay, Charlie, I think has always kind of been King Payman throughout the whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of cool that like in the beginning she's having this conversation with her mom like after her grandma died and um she just says to her mom she's like what's going to happen when you die and like when you first watch this you're like oh she's just dealing with some mortality shit like grandma just died now she knows everyone's gonna die around (laughs) her but knowing like what happens what unfolds throughout this whole movie 
like I feel like it changes that scene because you're like I feel like Charlie knows kind of what's going to happen right like she doesn't say if you die she says like what's going to happen when you die Mm -hmm. and so (laughs) using that I went through the movie and looked for all these tiny ass details that Aiden doesn't want to play where's Waldo with but I I do (laughs) when they have details but they you shouldn't rely on you like it's you should have a movie that exists without them and then going back and watching it, you're like, oh, cool. Like, that was awesome that they had that little thing. I didn't notice that at first, but now I do. I feel like you can watch it, though, and you can be like, oh, wow, that was cool, and then you go back and watch it. Like, I don't agree with you on that point at all. Like, I think you can watch it and you don't need all the tiny-ass details and you can still kind of get what's happening, and then when you rewatch it, you appreciate it even more because of all the tiny-ass details. Hold on, uh, can I can I interrupt with something? What the fuck is a wrangler, Aiden? A wrangler? Yeah, I'm looking here through the cast and crew. Uh, Joyce Quinn was the wrangler. Do we have a fucking uh, like cowboy? The data on? wrangler or like the DIT? Uh, it says head wrangler so take... and a wrangler. Uh, I'm assuming that just means in she's in charge of like the cards to dump to files to the DIT. Oh, uh, okay. I was like, do we have a fucking cowboy on set or some shit? Yeah, there's a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got right. long decapitated heads. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ, Brett. Yeah, and it <laughs> also right. should not take me this long to find the colorist. I can't find the colorist in here. Uh, Andrew Francis, it's supervising digital colorist because they don't know how to credit it. It's an editorial department. Editorial department. Thank you, sir. Yeah, he doesn't have anything that he's done well. Okay, return back to Leah. <laughs> okay. Back, going back into it. So, I feel like Charlie has some sort of knowledge of what's going to happen because I feel like King Payment's always kind of been inside of her, right? And you can see that in, um, I don't know, these, I feel like you don't even have to search that hard for these details. They're just kind of like, you. these are like easy to miss, I guess, on the first watch through. And it's when... Um, Annie's kind of figured everything all out and she's going and pounding on Joan's door and she's like, Joan, open up. I (laughs) want to know what the fuck's going on, you know? Um, But Joan's not there and you see that big like triangle carved into her kitchen table with Peter's face on it. And like right below that are like this little setup of all of Charlie's sculptures that she's been doing. And one of them is like the pigeon head that she glued on the pill bottle right and then there's three decapitated animal heads like at its feet there's like a rabbit and a mouse and like maybe a squirrel I don't know what the fuck it is it was really gross looking but um and then she has like bodies for like the detached heads that are all bowing down like before it so I'm like fuck like (laughs) I feel like Charlie knew because she just she has everything like created before Mm. her own decapitation you know Mm. and then like in the end um you get like in the treehouse i i think the ending's good aiden fuck you but uh, (laughs) fuck you but (laughs) um you look at like the like effigy that they've created right and like charlie's head is like kind of stamped on that like mannequin body with the crown on and everything just like her decapitated pigeon drawing and um there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on in their effigy too that you can notice earlier in the film as well like she has the symbol of payment on her chest which is what that necklace is like that's an occult symbol for payment and she Oh god, I can hear myself echoing a little bit, but um <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, I don't know either. But there's also the fact that this like effigy is holding like this hand and it's like that outstretched hand that like Peter did before he like fucking smashed his face on his school desk, you know? And you can see that like hand cane in the picture of Payman where he's like riding the camel in the like demon spell book and he also has like three decapitated heads just like chilling on his little camel bag and i don't know i just think all that shit super fucking rad <laughs> so super cool rad. um and also i'm just gonna talk a little bit about the king payment lore because it's super interesting well, like i went like it... let's go ahead and finish getting the initial thoughts before we go like deep diving oh, into okay. it okay okay 
Yeah. Uh, well, but I think it's good and Aiden's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I uh, just want to go ahead and bring up something, Brad. I mean, not Brad. Aiden, fuck you. He has re- colored a lot of great movies. The Tree of Life and Looper. Uh, Two fucking... I Looper, first, so I uh, Lo- Looper was okay. The coloring's pretty... No, I'm not talking about the quality of the movie. I'm talking about the coloring. It's fucking great. It, so I don't know. And The Tree of Life, fucking fantastic colored film. So, fuck you, Brad. Fuck you, uh... Uh, Aiden. Fuck you all. I mean, <laughs> when he gets consistent black levels, but you know. Whatever, Aiden. Next time they should hi- <laughs> next time they should hire you, right? Yeah, probably. No, they should definitely though. Go go in. Yeah, I, would, I Aiden, mean, don't hire me to color. Aiden Burns. AidenBurns dot com. I like what they did with like the dark scenes and like the green tones underneath it, but then like you flick a switch on and it suddenly it looks like ass. Like just yeah. He out. also colored the 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 the. The congratulations, uh, Post Malone featuring Quavo music video. That's pretty cool. All right, whatever. Brad, you're next. I'm next. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, to go with what Aiden said because mostly I agreed with everything he was on. Um, I thought the first hour of this movie was pretty much un- it was boring. It just they never got to anything. It was like watching, like I could watch a YouTube vlog and that's how I felt. It's like watching a white kid in suburbia. That's, I felt like I liked the first hour and then I hated the second hour. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, then we flipped it. I, I, that yeah, first yeah. hour was painful for me. And I think the first I hour like was good definitely needed. slow shit. Uh, and that I guess for me, I just, I don't give a shit about the King payment or the, like the Satanist plot. And see, so that's what like I, that I like the movie, but I hated that. So I just like I liked what the first hour was doing, and then they just like 180 and went to fucking King Paven's asshole. It was not a 180 if you pay attention. I mean, there's all the shit pointing towards it, but I, like I don't. I and see, and I kind of like that, that undertone. That. I like that undertone, but they, like you said, it was like a Where's Waldo trying to pick shit out and get to it. And when you finally get to it, you realize this family screwed anyway. The only way they're going to get out of it is if they kill all the children. That's really it, what was bound to the movie. Uh, it, it, it just wasn't for me. It just and parts of this movie reminded me of Doom. I couldn't see a goddamn thing. It was too dark. And yeah, that's kind Doom. of where I'm at. Oh, Doom! Yeah, it was really slow. Fucking Doom, man. I love slow movies. Slow is yeah. good, but not slow is good. Like look, okay, my my turn, motherfuckers. Um, look, oh, um, I don't know what Brad's talking about. Slow. I fucking watched Seven Samurai, man. And look, Brad, he's going to be like, well, let's go down with that action, bro. Uh, yeah. Brad's pick was slower. Yeah, fucking <laughs> seven. Brad's yeah. pick oh, yeah. was slower. Yeah, yeah riding boats, not. Fuck. And we've already gone through this, bro. I agreed with you. Seven yeah. Samurai is slow. That's because yeah. it's a three hour fucking movie. This is a two hour movie. It felt so? slower. So? There's about two hours, two, three, one hour, and, there's one hour and 40 minute movies that feel slower than this. Yeah, exactly. Riding the bullet being one. I, I agree with you. Yeah, I thought so. The first Samurai half an hour of writing the bullet felt longer than this. Felt like a fucking job, man. <laughs> that one felt like. <laughs> well, we don't talk about that one anymore. Uh, but look, yeah, I, I fucking love this movie, man. Um, I I think that you know, for a genre that you know I'm not well versed in, when I watched this movie, I was just like intrigued from the beginning to the end. I. I, I, you know, I, I liked the idea of the grieving family and I really wanted to, I want, I loved seeing that. It was just, it, it, there's this one scene in there where Colette, when she finds out that, you know, that Charlie died and she's just fucking there telling herself that she wants to die and how she wants to be dead. And that, that scene always stands out to me. It makes my fucking hair stand up. My hair's just standing up just thinking about it, man. And uh, I love that. Scene. That scene is fucking. I think that's a good scene because I showed it to my mom powerful, though, and my dude. mom was like, "I wouldn't cry like that if you died." I was like, cool, <laughs> no, but the thing is, it's not because you died. It's she lost her fucking mom, and she just lost her kid in like the span of the same weeks. It's like. You know, when Mike watches with my cousin, she was like, I think she's exaggerating. I'm like, oh, I don't think she's exaggerating one bit. Like, you know. Uh, I also think built down to that was guilt because she made her go to the party. Yeah, true. And it's like, you know, it's. I think it's a lot of this film, it has to do a lot with, you know, grieving. But I think one of the main issues, I mean, one of the main things that I think with this film is talking about is generational trauma. You know, and how especially it's been passed down through the women in this film. 
It's you know the mom, and then passing it to uh to to Tony Collette's character, and we really see that trauma, and uh, you know I I I love I love this movie, man. It's you know second time around, I loved it even more. I just I I, I kept I, I loved it's it is absolutely ridiculous that 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 Colette was not nominated for this movie. She should have been nominated. She did an amazing performance in this movie. I agree. Yeah. And I, I, I also really love the trauma and grief stuff because I felt like, for me, that's the most horrifying part of the film, yeah. right? Like, what kind of trauma yeah. does your parents leave you? Yeah. What And the mental illness thing, even though, like, mm-hmm. it was actually demons and not really mental yeah. illness. But for, like, the first time watching it, you're not really yeah. sure, you know? And something, like, that I, mm-hmm. and something that I really do applaud uh, Astor for doing that not a lot of uh not a lot of directors do with their with their with their uh actresses it's just the way they approach females i mean what's it called women in hysterics you know not a lot of uh not a lot of directors can actually you know uh show that correctly you know it'll usually come off as like oh it's the crazy chick and stuff you know she's just you know they're acting all crazy and stuff but no in these movies in in this in this movie and in Midsommar, it feels real. It feels like these like Colette and Pew like they're just they're grieving and you feel that grief. So I I really do applaud uh, the way that Astor really approaches the the female characters in this movie. Yeah, yeah. I thought mm-hmm. yeah the grieving was like my favorite part. So for me, the frustration is just that they took that and then were just like <laughs> LOL Satan like. <laughs> oh. Come on, man. Follow through on that, that and that, like, finish that it, better. But, like, well, and that, that's where I think this well, isn't exactly a horror film. Oh, it is 100% horror, Brad. 20 minutes of it is a horror You don't, film. Brad. No, 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 it's no, no, like, no, no. like horror. It, how is question. it not horror? This movie is 100% horror. 20 minutes horror. of this fucking movie is a horror film. The okay, first okay. hour is watching it. No, Jesus but you Christ, don't man. need, like, action and gore and stuff for it to be horror. Because really, yeah. like, the Satan stuff doesn't scare me. It's, like, the fucking trauma that i thought yeah. was the most horrifying or, part or like, this fucking you can have or this cold, psychological yeah. horror or oh, this that like was more into drama for me though. no it's no, it's the same way the witch is horror. horror in the way it's like psychological shit man you know the only the, thing horrifying about the witch though was their whole religious beliefs that yeah was the this is the horrifying, horrifying thing in this yeah. is that you know this <laughs> cult still horror. this cult yeah. this cult this basically this cult is trying to manipulate uh what's it called annie's grief that's the horror in this is that they're taking a, a very fucking vulnerable Tony Collette and leading her to make her child become the next host of a fucking demon king. I think this movie is 100% horror. It's not horror in the conventional sense. I think it's psychological horror, just like Midsommar is psychological horror as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, like whatever, like you know, we're all entitled to our opinion. But uh, what's it called? I, I, I honestly think that this, you know, this movie has a lot to say. And you know, I, like, I, okay, yeah, my, my, I have an issue with this movie. I think the movie's a little bit too long. I think some of those scenes could have been cut. That's why I, that's why my score is not a fucking ten. But you know, other than that, I really second time around, I don't see anything wrong with this movie that really stands out to me. But I still don't the, think the, it's too long. I think, I think like every scene and, and every piece of dialogue, I felt like it had a purpose to serve yeah. and it served it well. I don't know. It's just like I the, think it. <laughs> if you're gonna have the Satan shit, make it longer and don't make it feel just like I think just like want? the ending, the music at the ending, like makes it seem not. Mama. Like, no, the music is good though because yeah, when I was researching amazing. King Payman, when he is like summoned he is preceded by the host of spirits who play trumpets cymbals and everything so like mm-hmm. the whole music throughout that scene is all like hey bitches here. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that, 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 the music is great in this movie but that's I that yeah but that 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 uh that that song in, in specific when when i would hear it come on like i would just like get chills i'm like okay i'm feeling a little bit freaky here <laughs> Yeah. I loved it. Uh, I was like, I'm going to play this at my wedding. Oh, good lord. <laughs> You're ready, Chris. You're walking Don't down the aisle, to too. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I like Aiden over here. I, 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 I like a lot of the coloring in his shots as well. Not Brad, he doesn't like all of it, but I like a lot of it, man. 
I uh, I will say though, I do like the coloring in this movie more than Midsommar. Oh, Midsommar was, looked like shit. There were some aspects in <laughs> the coloring in Midsommar where it was like it was like a little bit too That's like it was uh, all bright and yeah, like a little bit bright. too bright. Yeah, that, it was a little bit too like the beginning was a little too bright. The towards the end of the progression of the movie, it's like it starts getting a little bit clearer, and I'm like, hey. Eh, why well, I wonder what we're doing there. Like why why? You know, in the we beginning it felt like we were like she mm-hmm. was clouded by her emotions, man, but then in the end it became clear that she had to light his bitch yeah. ass on fire. Well, you know, I I, I do I like think... I do like seeing a man on fire, but uh I do like man on fire. That was like such a power so. move. It, that was a flex. <laughs> yeah. Man on fire. Also a really good movie with Denzel Washington. You guys should watch that one. Um Okay. Yeah, fucking good movie. Um, Brad, you're you're awfully silent, my friend. Yeah, I'm kind of bored with this as much as I was with the movie. Shut up, Brad. Wow. Uh, <laughs> well, I Brad, suck it up. On you. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 surprised that Dixie's not barking anymore. Yeah, she fell asleep to this too. Well, thank God the dog fell asleep. Um, yeah, whatever, Brad. Yeah, you make me watch a lot of terrible shit too. Uh, fucking Wolf Creek was terrible. Yeah. Wolf Creek yeah, was Wolf pretty good. Right. It was alright. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. yeah. I mean, it was no. shot better than this was. <laughs> Ran the bullet. What? Whatever. All right. Whatever. Dude, uh, they can actually guys... shoot an isolating scene and then like. Do you guys all, want like, some just quick, wide shot quick means, like, five like, minute demon know, fact? Shoot. Yeah. Give me some facts before we go ahead and move on. When we're okay. done, we're almost done with this. I feel like this helps. Like, I don't know. Helps you appreciate the film a little more. Because I, I got really excited when I was researching King Payman and was finding all these connections. So, King Payman, I guess he first appears in Crowley's grimoire of demonology called the Goetia, which is basically just like a Pokédex for, like, demons. <laughs> <laughs> Pokédex <laughs> and, and demons! <laughs> yeah, and that's mentioned, like, in the movie, like, well, they don't say the Goetia, but, like, when you look at the little King Payman book when it's open for, like, that split second it mentions the Goetia. And so um, King Payman, he it, can provide knowledge of the arts and sciences, which I thought was really cool considering if Charlie is really King Payman the whole time. She's like this weird little artist, yeah. but she makes like shitty art, which is funny. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> some powers of King Payman's is he can create visions. So like when they're having the nightmares, I feel like those could be like him doing some vision making he can reanimate the dead he has flight which is like so when he's like possessing tony colette's body that's why she's like floating around um he can make all kinds of things and all sorts of armor appear which is just weird (laughs) but fun facts he also he could do something with like lights i don't remember what it was um but you see that a lot in the movie too (laughs) <laughs> no, no, like, like those little, the little scenes, you know, where it's like, you'll see like a light just kind of like shine down like a oh, wall yeah, or that, down the hallway. Little, like, yeah, the, like, and then like, yeah, and it'll get like the characters he needs to like go towards that direction. Like, yeah. that's a King Payman thing. Um, What else? Oh, <laughs> I looked up some actual like witchcraft stuff to like see what witches thought of the movie and people were torn on it um some people are saying like that it was very accurate and other people are like oh no i've worked with payman before man and he's not like this he doesn't need you to decapitate (laughs) edge i'm like payman's a great guy (laughs) basically (laughs) i saw that Um, sprout the other day we had a we had a fun (laughs) time man we drank a couple of beers we ate a couple of burgers man why you guys gotta be shitty like that yeah Hmm. I also read that if you actually wanted to summon payment, it would actually be like a lot more difficult because you'd have to go through a bunch of other demons because payment is like one of the four kings of hell. So you have to deal with like a bunch of like demon bureaucracy, basically. Jesus Christ. <laughs> payment works I like know. our government. So it's, it's the paperwork of hell that's going to kill you, not like actually going out decapitating people. But payment is one of the only... Um, demons that like requires a sacrifice for you to summon him and it doesn't say for sure like you have to decapitate someone or kill someone you just need to provide some sort of sacrifice 
and a sacrifice has to be made for like his two demons that serve him too so i feel like that could be like why there's like the three decapitated heads um but yeah i thought i thought king damon or ah damon mad damon <laughs> was super cool mad yeah damon. He Matt also Damon. apparently, um, he has a little bit of confidence issues because he looks feminine, even though he's very masculine. So he will get very enraged if you offer him like a female host, mm -hmm. which is why like he's a little bit more violent with those bodies and why mm -hmm. they had to correct it to Peter in the end. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I paused the film at one point where uh, where she was reading some of those books, and it said that a payment can live in a female host. But that it's what's it called? Uh, but it's not what's it called? Uh, you know, it's not gonna stay in there. It is, it is what's it called? It, payment is a male, so you must leave in a male host. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that Charlie was payment for a bit, and I think that payment killed Charlie. What's it called? Well, she did have. A I think so allergy. too. Yeah. Well, yeah, but there's also like when she's dri they're driving to the party, you see on the post that she fucking like decapitates her head on the the so yeah. symbols on yeah. the post too. So mm -hmm. you kind of like foreshadow like, ooh, something eerie's gonna happen with that yeah. pole. And How they keep bringing it up. out the window, you're like, oh god, yeah, <laughs> it's the pole. <laughs> or when she's eating the chocolate bar and they're like, there's no nuts in that, right? Because we didn't bring the epipad, and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, something's gonna happen I with this. I feel girl. like, yeah, I feel like they should have always carried the motherfucking epipad. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> a, Who doesn't a good fucking thing carry do. epipens, yeah. man? Also, I don't like. <laughs> there's not a shit ton of nuts when like when you first get to the party scene. They're like cutting up a fuck ton of nuts, and I don't know how. I don't know, man. Like, I guess he yeah, was, he's a dumb he trying to, to get. get he's he trying to get. He's sus. trying he was to get. Like, oh, I don't care suck. about all these nuts. I'm trying to get mine. I'm trying to get some yes. souk, man. Come on, I'm trying to get some oh. souk. Another fun thing with the treehouse is, I guess, like King Payman is connected to the Tree of Death. So if you think of like all mm -hmm. this stuff happening up in the treehouse, that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. And the treehouse is like a triangle shape, right? Yeah. And so and like, you need that, to like, summon demons in triangles. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the triangle to summon mm -hmm. demons in. And you see, like, the burned triangle in, like, Grandma's floor, too. So she's obviously just mm -hmm. chilling in there summoning demons mm -hmm. while she's, like, dying. Also, would like to bring up the what something. Bitch. What's it called? When I first watched this movie, it reminded me a lot of... Uh, it made me remember another movie, another horror film that I really like. Uh, the Taking of Dareborough Logan. Have you guys ever watched that one? No. I don't think so, Some no. freaky-ass shit, man. Yeah, Taking of Deborah Logan. Fucking pretty good movie. Uh, but yeah, some freaky ass shit that goes on in that one. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to, um, to what's it called? Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the, uh, to the scoring. But I did want to bring up one thing. Brad, it, I've, I've, you know, I podcasted with you for two years. Two years going on already. And one thing I've always noticed with these, with movies like this or movies like in general that pretty much involve a family that is coming down the road where they're not like gonna live why do you always want these families to live why do you like you know why why do you expect you know the you know for these families to not fucking die i like where there's a chance they live there's no chance for this family yeah well, just, but, it, it's it's written basically from the beginning yeah. all these people are gonna die yeah you know like why is it always like you, you want to expect for somebody to live in this like um, uh, maybe I'm an optimist. It's okay. because you think free choice is real. Yes. <laughs> or what's it called? Which makes me, which makes me really question why you love Rogue One so much. When the spoiler alert, everybody Rogue in fucking Rogue One dies. Oh uh, yeah, Rogue One was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Brad. Uh, what you want an actual answer? Yeah. About what? Never mind. Let's go and move on. I don't, to like that. I don't like the massacre of many people. I don't know. No, the fuck. Want? I'm talking about Rogue One. I would say, like, it, it, whatever. Why do you want? I, want. <laughs> I, I wish they all died faster. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wish we were all in boiling acid and we just got it over within the 30, first 30 minutes. How about that? Whatever. Whatever. Let's go and move on to, to scoring. We'll go ahead and go the same way we went before. So, uh, Aiden, Leia, Brad, me. Um. I was kind of scoring it as I was going, and it kept going up and down. I think my final one's probably four and a half, just because I hate the ending. But like, there were moments when it was mm -hmm. as high as like six, eight, but Damn. then it went down. Just, Man, it didn't make me care about King Payman in the way like other 
cult movie. Like, um, I saw one at like a film festival a few years ago called The Cliff, and I was like, damn, that's an interesting fucking cult. I'd vibe with that, and like that <laughs> felt better than like yeah. this. Then I was just like, oh, King Payment, what's up? And I was like, I don't give yeah. a shit about. I don't him. know, dude. Have you Googled him? He's kind of hot. I don't want to have <laughs> like... to Google him. I want the movie to make me interested in him. <laughs> Like, oh, what's I don't know, this? Man. Campaign? This is coming from the girl. Gala- <laughs> man. man, it's from coming from the girl who said that a Venom is a fuckable monster. Like Aiden, I, I'd search him up if I were you. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, King Payment can get my ass. He, he will. Dinner first. He will, man. All right, Leia, your score. Uh, ten out of ten, bitch. All right. This is the fifth time watching it, still loved it. Couldn't look away. Yeah. They all right. Wanted to. Bradley, what is your score? Before I go my score, I'm going to go back to your other question, though. Which one? Because this movie didn't make me give a shit about this family at all. It just was boring. That's just how I feel. Whatever, Bray. I give it five and a half. Oh, okay. Well, that's not bad. No. Um, my score is, uh, what's it called, a uh, five out of five on my letterbox, which translates over to a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah. Uh, that point five is because, well, for, because, you know, I, I do think the movie's a little bit too long. You know, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So uh, as always, it has been a fun time, but it's time we move on to the plugs into the housekeeping, my friends. All right. Um, okay, so Patreon, man. Patreon's been awesome and the, the horror month is over, but it does not mean that this week is th- that this that the reviews are over because if we go to patreon.com slash nerdcore. We're going to have our review of The Conjuring this week. And yes, my friends, I overshot. So it looks like next week we're going to have a free week of uh, reviews that we're going to basically pull out of our ass. So we'll see what we talk about next week on the the Tuesday episode and the Saturday episode. But uh, here's hoping that there's some stuff we can find that is great. This time I'm choosing one of them, Brad. Because I ain't watching another fireworks. That was now that Now that was terrible. That was terrible. Sorry, I wasn't listening. I was watching the light on the bottom of my mouse. Sorry. What? What'd you say? You're just staring into that and blinding yourself. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, much. Brad! You really, you really <laughs> are ADHD, Brad. Yeah. That's why I didn't like hereditary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't have the patience, young grasshopper. Yeah, I watch three-hour movies like it's a sport. All right, so uh, what's it called? Associate producers of the podcast, Cassie and Sarah, shout out to them. And shout out to our executive producers, Grayson, uh, Warlord Him at 98 on Twitter, Grayson Barker 98 on Instagram. If you ask nice with him, I'm pretty sure he'll send you a picture of his butt, like he does to Aiden. Or a newt. Uh, or a newt. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shane, can you tell us where they can find Shane, Brad? Twitch.tv slash SWRWK or Twitter at SWRWK Twitch. All right. All right, cool. Um, also, go to our uh, merch store, www.teespring.com slash store slash the Nerdcore. And uh, go, and, go and get Brad's face on a hoodie. That's a fun one, right? I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Ray Please, Ray- Aiden's honest. At least Hayden's honest, right? Uh, rate review the podcast on your podcast app of choice. Also, go follow the Twitters, uh, the, you know, the Nerdcore underscore Instagram at the Nerdcore. Uh, the Nerdcore, the Nerdverse, the Nerd, the Nerdcore group is the uh, Facebook group. And go check out the website, thenerdcore.com. And check out the YouTube because we got a bunch of episodes already uploaded. So you can go and check that out. Uh, um, anything else that needs to be said? Check out tomorrow, uh, Unstructured with Young Yoda, right, Brad? Uh, sure. Okay, Brad. That's <laughs> maybe one of these days I'll come in bored and not say anything, Brad. Okay. Okay. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Makes this makes make you make this hard, man. Okay. Uh, but yeah, check out Instructure tomorrow, and uh, we'll you'll catch us again on uh, Saturday for Saturday morning review. Don't know what we're watching, but you know we'll 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 see what we can do. Uh, but without further ado, uh, can he, can the guests tell them tell them where they can find them on the internet? Well, uh, I guess go I'll first. Instagram at Aiden dot Burns. Burns is spelled B Y R N E S, like a drunk Irish person. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Uh, Leah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Lumpy Space Bitch, but the I and bitch is a one. Cool stuff. 
And as always, you know where they can find us too. Uh, Brad, Random Germ 101 everywhere. And uh, I am the Nerdy Chicano on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. I like keeping it consistent. I yeah. I should do that soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm also a lumpy space bitch on Reddit, but I've only used it once. So. Yeah. <laughs> Low key Fox. Yeah, Reddit's pretty cool, man. Uh, Brad likes to send me a lot of stuff on Reddit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where I find most of my good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one video is fucking stupid. But uh, yeah. Um, without further ado, it's been a wonderful time here with you all. I'm sorry that Brad is not talking about anything. It seems like he wanted to be the protester again today. Um, uh, I'm just a bit tired. I got yeah, I know. That. We're all tired, my friend. It's a it's a tiring day to be alive. Dixie, thank you for being on the podcast too, baby girl. All right, Bradley, send him into the podcast void. All right, Raul. Thank you for being host as always. Thank you to our two great guests, Blay and Aiden. Making it through a month with us, I know that's not the easiest task. Oh, this month was rough. Trust me, I've been <laughs> doing it for two years, so I, I, I get it. And yeah. uh, thank you to all our listeners. Thank you to all our Patreon supporters. We appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, I guess in the next one, hopefully I'll have some caffeine. Young Yoda out. Mm-hmm.